The football coaching search is over in Knoxville. The men's basketball team is ranked in the top 25 for the first time in seven years. Things are getting better on Rocky Top as we welcome you to Thompson Bowling Arena today. The 6-1 Tennessee Balls play host to 6-3 Lipscomb. And good afternoon. I'm Matt Stewart, joined by Debbie Antonelli. And Debbie, this Tennessee team picked to finish 13th in the SEC. Here we are four weeks into the season. They're number 24 in the nation. Big reason why is Grant Williams. Well, he's been terrific. He's certainly been their most consistent performer at 6'7", just a sophomore. But he is a preseason pick for the second team in the SEC. He leads the team in scoring. And he's a part of a sophomore class that has really elevated this program, part of the reason why they are in the top 25. Watch out for Lipscomb, though. Garrison Matthews put 28 on them a year ago, and the Bisons actually led by 15 points in the first half when they met last year. He's a dangerous scorer, and he will have an opportunity in their offense to be able to find some buckets in transition or score from outside the arc. He is on the top of the scouting report for Tennessee. Brian Shake tosses it up and the volunteers in their home white start on offense. Inside they go to Grant Williams, had a shot contested and off his foot, so the Bisons have the ball. There's a look at the starting lineup. Grant Williams at close to 16 and seven a game. He's number seven in the SEC in offensive rebounds per game. Tennessee hangs their hat on their man-to-man -man defense. They will extend their pressure. They will be up the line, but ball pressure is a very big part of the philosophy for Rick Barnes. Eli Pepper with the first basket of the ball game. The junior out of Princeton, Kentucky, averaging six points per game. Admiral Schofield hits the three-pointer, and this Tennessee team is number one in the SEC at three-point shooting, 42.6%. Ball sails out of bounds, turnover for Lipscomb. And that's been a big problem for the Bison so far this season, Debbie, as they are last in the A-Sun, averaging under 17 turnovers per game. Yeah, they're minus one in the turnover margin, and you can't afford to have live ball turnovers against Tennessee. Their team speed is too good. They'll turn it over quickly. Grant Williams off glass. I think Rick Barnes does a terrific job isolating Grant Williams. He can get him shots around the elbow. He can get him shots on the block. He's a very good finisher in transition. He actually had 30 points in the victory over the Bisons a year ago. That's a three-point attempt and nailed by Michael Buckland, who averages eight a game. When we spoke to Rick Barnes this morning, he was concerned about the skip over the top of his defense for threes. This is a team in Lipscomb that loves to play off the pass. You've got to run them off the three-point line, Matt. Alexander got the size advantage. Rebound controlled by Matthews and the Bisons. Bisons have won four of their last five in the last week. They swept their season series against their big arch rivals, Belmont. Cooper misses the three-pointer, and Williams controls the rebound. Well, Cooper gets a great look, but Marbury is a player that they need to get the ball inside and play through him. Schofield hits his second three-pointer. He's 44% behind the three-point line. Coming into the game, he's now 13 for 27 on the season. Buckland the drive, high off the glass. Gets his own miss and misses again. Inside pass deflected. Bowden gets it back. This is a tough check right here for Lipscomb. Pass out to Bone. Work it around the arc. Bowden shooting 64% on his threes and leads the SEC. Misses his first attempt today. Matthew shot blocked by Alexander. He's number seven in the SEC, averaging 1.7 of those a game. Kyle Alexander's really improved his game. You got to be careful not to over penetrate against the size of the rim. And a whistle. SEC wired today, and here is Coach Barnes with Coach Alexander right before tip. If I looked as good as hey. you, I'd wear my hair like that. Listen. My wife actually asked me today, when you lose your hair, what you can do is that I'm going to save it. There you go. How things going? As a guy that grew up cheering for Tennessee, I never thought I'd be less excited about you being good. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach Alexander grew up a big UT fan. Not only did he grow up a big UT fan, 
but he actually spent his first semester of college here before transferring to Belmont. Well, he had an offer to play basketball at Belmont. He decided that because he was a Tennessee fan, he wanted to experience SEC football. He came here for a semester, and he said, ah, I did that. I'm going to go and play basketball now. I want to be a coach, so I'm going to go to Belmont. And that's where he spent his playing career. James Daniel checks in after the free throws are made by Bowden. And it continues for his family, family, all of the family, a big, big Orange fans, and his daughter Allie is a freshman here on the Knoxville campus. Marbury not able to save it. Good help. Great rotation. You've got to have your pressure package in when you're going against Tennessee on the defensive end. They are going to be up the line. They're going to be overplaying. You've got to have high post entries. You've got to have dribble entries. You cannot overpenetrate against the shot blocking presence at the rim. Turner the miss. He had 24 against Georgia Tech in their 77 70 win in Atlanta on Monday. And Fulkerson getting some early minutes here for Rick Barnes. Marbury working inside, hits the hook. Alexander told us that Marbury is the key to their team. They're going to play to him because he can score on the block. He's going to get a one-on-one. -on -one. Tennessee is not expecting to help. And they got to play through him. He's got to facilitate their three-point shooting. Bone takes the three-pointer, and he drains it. That's the danger of Tennessee and where you see the most improvement. We know about the commitment on the defensive end. They have more players that can score this year. They're three for five to start this game behind the three-point line. We have our first timeout of the afternoon. The Volunteers, nine of their first 13 points have come behind the arc. They lead by six. Back on Rocky Top, Tennessee leading Lipscomb by a score of 13-7. Tonight we'll have a college hoop double header for you on the SEC Network. Arkansas battles number 14, Minnesota at 645 Eastern. Then at 9, it's Missouri taking on Green Bay. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. One of five games here. Ours is one of five games on the SEC Network today. Already today, we saw South Carolina survive an upset bid by Coastal Carolina. But Debbie, it's already been a crazy Saturday in college basketball as Duke was knocked off by Boston College. How about the Blue Devils going up to Chestnut Hill and getting knocked off in the first ACC game? Do you like this uh, playing Bowman conference play. games in oh. December? The Big Ten, of course, is doing it as well. Big Ten's already had two games in conference play. I think that that's a, a byproduct of uh, the Power League's going to 20 conference games. I yeah. think everyone's going to be playing a lot of games in December now. I like it. I do too. <laughs> On the wing, the jumper missed by Rose. A battle for the rebound, and here come the Orange. James Daniel, the transfer out of Howard University. Great story. We'll talk more about him as the day goes on. Daniel going to take a three-point shot right there. He averaged 27 a game for Howard a year ago and led the nation in scoring. Hey, now you've fallen in love with the three if you're Tennessee. And if I'm Daniel, you got to get a sweat going a little bit before you start shooting. I know he averaged 27 points a game last year and led the nation in scoring. Corkerson gets it ahead, and Garrison Matthews beats him to the loose ball. That was Darrington who couldn't get there in the corner. The Bisons miss. Turner the rebound for the Volunteers. This is a big game back for John Fulkerson standing there in the middle in the paint, working his way on the baseline. Fractured elbow in the Bisons game last year and missed the rest of the season after playing 10 games as a freshman. Lamonte Turner, mid-range jumper. Fulkerson battling, battling for the rebound, and the Bisons win it as Korn comes away with it. Ball popped up into the air. Korn gets it. Matthews for three. Williams clears the rebound. Williams left open. Yeah, that's not necessary, his game. He's only hit a couple of triples this season. Debbie, eight of their first 12 shots have been behind yeah, the three-point line. It might be time to throw it on the block and work inside out for some of those triples. Daniel was called for the foul. Mm. He 
does have his hands on him. That's what the official saw. But it looks Although, like he fell down because he was off balance yeah. and not because he was pushed. Right. But who are we to question the officials? Well, that's two for Daniel because he just picked up another one. And he's going to come out of the ball of the game very quickly. Jordan Bone will check back in for him. Really kind of amazing. You see the NCAA active career scoring leader just under 2,000 points. Averaged 27 points per game at Howard. And it's just the second ever grad transfer they've had here in Knoxville. Buckland takes a three. Whistle underneath. The foul's going to be called on the Bisons. This one's on Pepper. That'll be number one on him. Two team fouls now on Lipscomb. Lipscomb has had good ball movement. They have had some good early looks, and they just haven't knocked him down. If you're going to pull an upset over a top 25 team, you got to make shots. Turner on the cut. Missed the layup. Well, that's part of Tennessee's defense, though. Not only do they get tips, steals, deflections, but they can speed you up. And Ball knocked away and out of bounds off of the Bisons. See, there's a nice play right there. The defense by Rick Barnes is designed to make you put it on the floor. They're going to have great ball pressure. They're going to come and get in your grill, put, make you put it on the floor. Your rotations have to be good, and they're getting better. The one thing they want to have avoid are the silly fouls. That's one thing that Coach Barnes talked about with us at shoot-around. Their opponents have taken 28 more free throw attempts than they have this year because of what he calls silly fouls. Schofield, the turnaround. Admiral Schofield feeling it here on Army-Navy Day. We know he's pulling for Navy. With a name like Admiral, how could you not? See, those fouls away from the basket, away from the ball, are the fouls that you were just referencing, Matt. You don't want to put Lipscomb in the bonus early. They are a very good free throw shooting team. Schofield has scored eight of their first 15 points. He's averaging just under 12 a game with four rebounds per game. Great ball pressure without fouling. It's a challenge for most teams. Marbury banging bodies with Grant Williams and had a shot rejected. Schofield's been the hot hand for the Volunteers. He'll take another shot. This one a little bit short. See, that's where you don't want the ball to get stuck. You want to move it. That shot can be available at any point in the shot clock. Even though he's had the hot hand early, maybe that was a little heat check. Three-pointer off the iron. Lipscomb having a difficult time behind the arc. They're now one for six. This is going to be a good shot right here for him to take. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. That's what I'm talking about. You could predict that before he even launched into his motion at the rim. Grant Williams abuses the Bison's defense. This is the largest lead for the Volunteers here in the first half. Too tough in the isolation game on a low block. Quick enough to go around taller defenders. Pass deflected and knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Volunteers. There's a new kid in town. His name is Jeremy Pruitt. And an old new kid in town, too. Philip Fulmer, the new AD. Big Orange Country. Back at Thompson Bowling Arena, Arena, the thunderous applause that you hear is for the new head coach of the Volunteers just moments ago. Uh, moments ago, the new AD of the Tennessee Volunteers, Philip Fulmer, introduced Jeremy Pruitt. I'm so honored to be your athletic director, and I am very honored to introduce your new football coach, Jeremy Pruitt.
about that? The Alabama Crimson Tide defensive coordinator Jeremy Pruitt, the new head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers, ending a tumultuous search over the last 26 days that resulted in Philip Fulmer being named the new AD and Jeremy Pruitt, the new head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. Coach Pruitt's been a part of four national championships, three at Alabama, one at Florida State. He's been in charge of the defense the last couple of years for Alabama. He's from that Nick Saban coaching tree. It worked for the University of Georgia with Kirby Smart and Tennessee hoping that it works for them with Jeremy Pruitt. Foul's going to be called on Jordan Bone right here in front of us. Fourth team foul on the Volunteers. Off the elevator screen. Really working hard to try to get Marbury going and Matthews going. Matthews is 0 for 2 so far in this game. Shot clock down to 2 in the lane and the miss by Matthews. Grant Williams getting the crowd elevated here just a few moments ago right before the break. Incredible isolation play. Good cut to the low block. Two feet in the paint. Two points for Grant Williams. And that's the first points for Matthews today, ending a streak of five minutes and ten seconds for the Bisons without a point. But, you know, I like coming off the ATO that Casey Alexander puts the ball in the hands of Matthews, runs him through an elevator door screen, tries to get him in isolation on ball reversal. Garrison Matthews, the number one scorer in the Atlantic Sun Conference at 19.6 points per game. Trust in Daniel back on the floor with a couple of fouls. Turner misses the mid-range jumper. Alexander goes up there and gets the rebound and puts it in. He's the number two offensive rebounder in the conference, Debbie, at 3.6 offensive boards a game. Yeah, he's really starting to define his role. He's doing a terrific job guarding one-on-one -on, -one on the block. He's a presence at the rim with their pressure defense. Matthews, Matthews the air ball. Buckland launches a long three and hits it. Buckland has hit two of their three three-pointers. The way Lipscomb shoots the three, they're going to be in it. They well, can get a, back in a, in a hurry. Yeah, it was a record-setting year ago, for a season for them a year ago, in points per game, assists per game, three-point shooting. Their production is down this year. A big reason why is their guard, Nathan Moran, who's out indefinitely after having double hip surgery in the offseason. One on the shot clock for Daniel, and hit it with the shot clock winding down. That's how much Rick Barnes trusts James Daniel and how valuable he is to their offensive rhythm. Got two fouls, he brings it back in, and they trust him not to pick up a third. Marbury can't handle the pass. Really good ball movement here. Off the cut, Daniel, contact with Jones. SEC wired with Rick Barnes, teaching moment for the Volunteers coach. Somebody's got to drive the ball. We've just shot four threes in a row. Four threes, don't shoot threes. <laughs> yeah, this is what we were talking about earlier, and then the next time down, off. That last bit of conversation, it's Grant Williams who gets a dunk at the rim. And when we talked to Coach Barnes about the three-point shooting and the shoot-around, he said it's because we've been patient, we've gotten good shots, and we don't go hunting for threes. We let them come to us. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Bisons. Eli Pepper is calling out Tennessee's sets right here. That's how good the scout is. Oh, 
Off the inbounds, Daniels from this, and Pepper grabs the rebound. Brian Shea blows the whistle. So a warning for Rick Barnes, who's gone over 200 games the Volunteers you have know, without a technical being called. You know what? Oh, I have not seen an official stop the game to give a warning. Usually they give the warning coming up the floor and just say, hey, I've had enough. I heard enough. I don't want to hear any more. That's your warning. On a dead ball, not stop play and, and issue a warning. Brian Shea just did. I bet he wasn't talking about his hair like he was talking about Casey <laughs> no, Alexander's hair. No, I guarantee hair. not. Not if he wants to stay on the sideline today. Another foul called on the Volunteers. This one's on Pons. That's your warning, Coach Barnes. Six team fouls now on the Volunteers. The next will put Lipscomb in the bonus for the rest of the half. You know, there's the emphasis on the coaching box. Certainly he was in the box, so it had to have been something that he might have said. Traveling will be the call on Bramheyer. And a timeout with 7.47 to play here in the first half. Tennessee with the 10-point lead on Lipscomb. We saw the new AD of the Volunteers, Philip Fulmer. They even have a street name for him here in Knoxville. Games already in the books from earlier. South Carolina hosting Coastal Carolina. Gamecocks down one under 15 seconds to play. Hassani Gravit hits the layup. South Carolina wins 80 78. Kentucky take on Mama. PJ Washington blocks it on one, did. Hamadou Diallo jumper on the other end. Game, or Wildcats win 93 to 76. Back to Matt and Debbie. All right, thank you, Peter. Tennessee leading Lipscomb by a score of 22 12. Debbie, let's take a look at your do's and don'ts for today. Well, for, for Lipscomb, they've got to make the extra pass. Right now, they are only two for eight from the three-point line, and they cannot give up any runouts off turnovers or poor shot selection. Right now, they're down 10 because Tennessee is able to push and get some early offense. Playing on the edge for Rick Barnes means playing with great focus, following the game plan, and they can't give up any transition threes, which they've done a very good job of so far, running Lipscomb off the three-point line in transition. A absolutely. I thought it was interesting when we talked to Admiral Schofield about what does playing on the edge mean to you. He means locked in the entire week, locked in on the scouting report, knowing your scouting report. 40 minutes of focus inside the game, and that starts on the defensive end for Tennessee. And you better be playing defense because if you're not guarding anybody, you're not playing. You're not on the floor. And the aforementioned Admiral Schofield checks right back in. So right now it's six team fouls for Tennessee. This is one of the uh, parts of the game that Rick Barnes is looking for his team to get better at. Pressure defense without putting Lipscomb on the free throw line. Jump ball going to be called. Possession arrow favors the Bisons. Tennessee, excuse me, Matt, Tennessee's already played 10 players. That's how deep their bench is, and that's a big part of why they've been successful this season. Everybody's starting to figure out their roles. The Coach Barnes wants to get more out of his bench, although his bench has outscored opponents by an average of 16 and a half points per game, and we have a whistle, and the basket will count. Monday, the SEC Nation will have complete breakdowns of where every SEC team has landed for their bowl games. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Kenny Cooper at the line completes the three-point play. So that's an example right there of what we were talking about. Not fouling on the perimeter, not fouling a jump shooter, forcing a tough shot. 
an and one the old-fashioned way for Lipscomb and now Tennessee's in the bonus we got seven minutes to play Bison shooting just 29%. The Volunteers not much better. They're just under 35% so far in this game. And Schofield's the only guy that's been really hitting shots for him so far. They're showing a little bit of help. There's a double team. Offensive foul on Grant Williams. And that'll be number one on him. See, now I have the same puzzled look on my face, Grant. He's, he was very patient. Technical foul just called on Rick Barnes. Now look, he splits the double team, and I don't see him lower his shoulder or push off. The official had a great angle on it. That is a tough call to go against Rick Barnes, and he's already been warned. And now he's been teed. told that the technical is not on Barnes, but the technical is on Grant Williams. Rose with the technical free throws. So Grant Williams and not Rick Barnes called for the technical foul. And so Williams now has two as he goes to the bench. Yeah, See, there, so he was. there you go. Yeah. Try to yeah. sneak one in as yeah. uh, Brian Shea was running by. Yeah, you could see Rick Barnes. Now, he was yelling at Brian Shea, but what we didn't see was a little sneakeroo there by Grant <laughs> Williams to uh, say something under his breath as, coach, as Shea was walking by. The flip up and in by Cooper, and the Bisons are now down only three. So now you've got to see if Tennessee will play on edge right here. Will they have the focus in this possession? Move the ball, shift the defense. I look for Schofield in this set. Turner had it knocked away. Cooper called for the reach in foul. That'll be number one on him, and that'll be the fourth team foul on the Bisons. This pace is Casey Alexander's pace. He doesn't have near the depth. He's got Tennessee in a little rocky foul trouble in terms of being in the bonus early. I'd say that. Uh, Lipscomb's got to be pleased with coming back down 10. Yeah. In the middle of a 7-0 run right now. Another foul called on Bisons and another foul. This one's called on Greg Jones this time. See right there, you got to jump to the ball or you got to lock and trail and get your hands off or beat him to the spot. And Jones doesn't do that. That's two fouls now on Jones and now the Bisons team total has climbed to five. Off the inbound, Schofield, the air ball. Good ball. Jones, shot blocked by Alexander. How about the big fella getting out there to block the three? Schofield on the break, the Turner jams it home. And that's the way you do it with the pressure defense. Well, you wonder without Grant Williams on the floor, who's going to be that scorer? Daniel's certainly an option when he's on the floor, but he's got foul trouble as well. So this group's going to have to do it with their defense. Cooper with the left hand. Schofield clears the rebound. Turner. Air ball, Fulkerson saves it. It is so hard to offensive rebound an air ball. That's two in a row for Tennessee. Under five to play in the half. Volunteers up five. They've led by as much as ten. Pass denied by Fulkerson. Matthew still not able to get going. Does a nice job of moving the ball. They penetrate inside, and then look at the range that Kyle Alexander covers. The steal, the deflection, and then the finish inside by Turner. Meets with the approval of the Volunteers bench as well. 
but Tennessee has done a really good job. Obviously, Garrison Matthews' name was circled at the top of the scouting report. They are dead set, determined not to let him put 28 on him again this year. He has yet to score from the floor. He's had a free throws. Offensive foul on Cooper, and that's number two on him. Good job by Daniel to sell it. Well. Daniel's got the switch. Now he's got Pepper on him. Kick it back out, yes. Daniel, three. Good, good ball movement, smart. Good patience by Tennessee. You know, Coach Barnes told us that he was still trying to figure out where his shots were going to come. He's got a couple of them good. fall for him today. Pepper didn't want any of that, uh, Daniel, on the perimeter. I'm telling you right now, he went right to the rim, which is where he's supposed to be. They want to guard him on the outside. Buckland got his man in the air and takes the three. Pepper got the offensive rebound. Jump hook off glass. Eli Pepper. Daniel, another three point attempt. Well, this is what we saw a lot of at uh, Howard, by the way. Three three pointers now for Daniel. Yeah, again, putting him back on the floor with two fouls is trusting a veteran player in your backcourt to make plays. James Daniel. Relocating and filling behind the penetration, knocks down a deep triple, and then the next time down the floor, same thing, steps into it. Tennessee goes back up nine. Jimmy Dykes, Antoine Walker, Peter Burns at half. We'll talk about Big Blue in the Big Apple Hogs with the top 15 matchup. But what are we seeing in Knoxville right now, Antoine? Tough defensive, um, defense from the three-point yep. line has got Tennessee to this lead right now. I want to ask Debbie Antonelli. Debbie, when I watch Tennessee play, Rick mm -hmm. Barnes, I think, is building this thing by recruiting guys who want to be coached. Give me your thoughts on that, would you please? Yeah, Jimmy, I agree. Uh, and talking to Coach Barnes, you know, he's gotten deeper on the perimeter. He's too deep on the interior. He's looking for sustained effort. So you got to have character guys that want to play inside a system and want to get better. They want to be coached because this is a team that picked in the bottom part of the SEC. Yep. Now they're ranked in the top 25. What he's doing is building confidence every day, and he's got enough skill around him, and they're playing with great effort. That's part of the reason why they're having the early success. And one of those guys that you build around is a grad transfer, James Daniel. As we mentioned from Howard, he's had the hot hand here over the last couple of minutes with three three-pointers now, three of six behind the arc, and he is the leading scorer in this game so far at nine points per game, had been averaging only five and a half per game. He makes it look easy, and he is letting the game come to him. And we spoke to him this morning. He said, I'm going to play defense, and I'm going to work to set everyone up. I don't need to seek shots. The ball will find me if we move it. I thought it was a very mature answer by him. And Debbie, I thought it was very interesting. His coaching staff at Howard encouraged him to take a look at Tennessee. He said he wanted to go play for a Hall of Fame caliber coach, in large part because Coach Barnes gets guys to the lead. It's exactly what Jimmy's alluding to in terms of building culture and building that climate around what Rick Barnes has had success doing. And James Daniel wants to play in a competitive environment so that he can get better. He wants to play professionally before he goes on to whatever he does next. I thought it was interesting when we were talking to him. You brought that up. He kind of had a look on his face. Well, what do you mean about it? I'm going to play basketball yeah. for a long time? <laughs> what do you mean what do I do next? I'm going to play basketball. Foul's going to be called on Walker, number one on him. He's getting his master's degree in agricultural leadership. Good for him. Well, even Matthews After I was done it. with my five years, I didn't want any more, no more, please. Even Garrison Matthews is missing at the free throw line, so he is 
really out of rhythm offensively, and you have to give that credit to Rick Barnes' defense. They've rotated multiple bodies on him during the game. He's number six in the A-Sun in free throw shooting, coming off a big 26-point performance in their rivalry win against Belmont on Monday. Darrington the drive, and foul's going to be called on the Bison. It's a great skip pass and attack on the weak side. Casey Alexander, his family here watching, his wife Sonny, the daughter Allie sitting there in the Lipscomb pullover, even though she's a freshman here at UT, and sons Reed and Mason all watching. As we mentioned, they're a big Tennessee family, in particular Casey, came here as a young man and then went on to Belmont, but in attendance here, and Allie made no bones about it. We had a chance to visit with her at their practice last night. She said, I will be wearing Lipscomb purple. Oh, I mean, without any doubt, Christmas is coming. You Need some extra <laughs> spare change uh, as of finishing up the semester. I mean, come on, Dad's got a little extra <laughs> Cash he can pass on while he's on campus to his daughter, right? Absolutely. And, you know, Casey went on after starting here at Tennessee, went on to play basketball for Rick Bird there at Belmont and had a great career and then was an assistant coach with Rick Bird before going off to get his first head coaching job at Stetson for a couple of years and now hired by the Bruins' crosstown rival. But they're happy to be back in Nashville. And apparently they're taking a look at a possible flagrant foul as Brian Shea and Rusty Phillips are at the monitor. Meantime, this gives Casey Alexander and uh, Rick Barnes a chance to visit with their team and do a little X's and O's here with 2.51 to play in the first half. So we're trying to figure out exactly what they're looking at other than we've been told that they're looking at a possible flagrant. We're not told on who or by whom or what happened. And now the crowd grows restless here. know maybe Marbury might have hit him in the face going for the basketball though just yeah. guessing I, I, don't I don't even see. think there was contact there was some con unless there were not on the face though. no that not on that that was just a basketball play and a, and a foul nothing extra there this is just the Fourth all-time meeting between these two teams, even though they're separated by just 104 miles along I-40. As we mentioned a year ago, should take another look at the replay. Bison's had a big first-half lead and put 58 points on the board in the first half before the Volunteers ended up winning the game, 92-77. Been a different story here this year as Tennessee has pretty much been in control the entire first half and leading by nine right now. And the officiating crew now joined by Gerald Williams still discussing things. But we're kind of in the dark as to what the I think Rick Barnes call is, is going right to have a conversation with Casey Alexander. Well, Gerald's going to come over here and talk to you, Debbie. He's going to tell you what's going on, and then you can tell us. So... Apparently, there is going to be a flagrant one foul called here. A flagrant one. So, Debbie, who's it on? on? He called a flagrant foul on Eli Pepper, number 22, off the ball. You see Eli Pepper shaking his head. Obviously, he disagrees with it. And that'll be the second foul on Pepper. And that'll put Schofield at the line. All right. Okay, watch 22 battling there. And Schofield so, was the guy that got fouled, and he hit one of the two free throws. So now volunteers get the ball on the baseline as well. This matches their largest lead of the game.
Bone with the crossover dribble and wow. reverse layup. Nicely done by Jordan Bone. What a take off the bounce. A little clear out and he is right to the rim. Explosive step to get to the other side of the rim and reverse it in. Casey Alexander told us, Debbie, that he was really concerned with the Volunteers' pressure defense, and it seems like it's gotten the Bison speeded up on offense right. the entire day so far. Marbury inside. Good job to keep the weak side busy to allow for the lob pass over the top. In transition, Darrington knocks down the jumper. Another weapon off the bench for Rick Barnes. But one of the guys that Coach Barnes said they want to get more out of this guy. Nice slip. See, that's those are the kinds of things you have to have against pressure teams. You have to Turner. be able to slip. Great step by Turner to get separation. Go get that pass and lay it in. And Tennessee has their biggest lead of the half at 14 now. I was really impressed, Debbie. Watch the explosive of, of Turner here to separate from the defender. Two good finishes at the rim. Turner doing a nice job of just playing over the top again, off the defense, over the top of the D, all the way to the spinning Turner who finishes on the other end. I thought the rotation was good. The reason why they were able to make that play is because on the slip, they did a terrific job of defending and rotating over. Tonight we'll have a college hoop doubleheader for you on the SEC Network. Arkansas battling number 14, Minnesota at 6.45 Eastern. That should be a great game. Then at 9, it's Missouri taking on Green Bay. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. Two of the big five games we have here on the SEC Network today. It already started with uh, South Carolina surviving an upset bid by Coastal Carolina. We're game number two. UAB and Auburn will follow us. Buckland in the air, had to change his shot, and a whistle. Foul's going to go against Lipscomb. Yeah, that was really good defense. As Buckland came around and snakes behind that screen, he got caught in the air because no one rotated over to help. They didn't over-rotate. Pardon me, I thought the foul was called on Lipscomb. Oh Instead, boy. it's going to be on Turner. Okay, so now I'm going to have to say that would be what you would call a patient whistle. So that was a really late whistle. Maybe patient is not even appropriate. So Turner now has two fouls. Buckland unsuccessful on the free throw. And so there are four volunteers with two fouls. Turner, Williams, Daniel, and Bowden. It's a smaller lineup on the floor for Rick Barnes. Buckland is their leading scorer so far today. He has seven of their 25. He averages only eight a game, so I'm guessing that the game plan didn't include Buckland being the leading scorer. They have shut down Matthews, who's not hit a shot. He's made three free throws. But I bet that's Tennessee's game plan. So Absolutely. they got to be pleased <laughs> with what they've done defensively on Matthews. Shot clock down to three. Schofield gives it up. That's going to be a shot clock violation. And remember one of the things Rick Barnes said to us this morning is if we're late into the shot clock, then we haven't done our work early. And they didn't, they got the ball stuck. You know, you got to move it. You got to keep moving. You got to keep cutting. As these teams get ready to head to the locker room, how, you feel like Barnes is going to be happy with what they've done defensively, not so happy with the offense. Not happy with the fouls. I think that's an issue and a point of contention with him, but very pleased that they've taken Matthews out and they've been locked in on very important pieces of their game plan. And they've made things very difficult for Marbury, too. He's only gotten off three shots. Matthews clocked down to nine on the shot clock. Difference of 25 seconds, game clock and shot clock. Now down to four, and the turnaround jumper by Korn. Timeout called by the Volunteers with 14.9 on the clock. 
Here's some more Rick Barnes SEC wire from the volunteer sideline. They got again, five offensive rebounds. We got to finish the possession. We've got to finish it. Run the ball. We don't have it. Make them guard. Again, we need to play this four minutes. Hard defense without putting them on the line. Guard, rebound. Let's go. Go, Vaughn. Go, go, go. This is what Rick Barnes likes. Transition game. Getting out off their defense. Getting some run outs. Remember what I said? What one of the things that Lipscomb could not do is my don't for them was don't allow Tennessee to get run outs off your shot selection or your turnovers. And Tennessee is, is doing that and has helped them separate nine fast break points off their defense. It's been the difference in the game as the Volunteers lead by 11 here on their final possession of the half. Look for Schofield in this set. Clock down to five. Number five in white. Turner down to two, going to take it inside the arc and hit it. That's a two-pointer by Lamonte Turner as he finishes the half with six points. And the Volunteers will head to the locker room with a 13-point lead. Tennessee leading by double digits. Now to Peter Burns in the SEC Network studio. You know it's better than hitting your last five shots to end the half? That would be hitting six, and that's exactly what the Vols did. 40-27, to 27, they lead Jimmy Dykes, Antoine Walker, Peter Burns here with you. A little bit different last year, remember, Lipscomb scored 58 in the first half against Tennessee. Rick Barnes said, no, that is not <laughs> happening today. It's fun to watch Vols basketball when they're playing like this. It is, and uh, Deb talked about it a little bit when I asked her the under four. Rick Barnes has built this thing with a culture of recruiting guys that want to be coached and will take hard coaching. So they excel now in, in, in defensive rebounding percentage, low turnover percentage, block shots percentage because they rotate over. Uh, to me, they play harder consistently longer than anyone else in yep. the SEC through the first week of December. And this was a young team last year, Antoine, that they got a lot of minutes, and now they're starting to kind of mature in front of our eyes. Yeah, and obviously they're deeper now. You have to transfer yeah. Daniels on the team, a guy who can really score the basketball. But it just stands out. This is another team that's kind of like by committee, if you really think about it. Their team, they got eight guys that score for them already. They have 12 assists as a team in the first half. Obviously, they've made the three-point shot, six out of 15 from the three-point line. We know they're a great three-point shooting team this year. But they have a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're a well-balanced team, and, and Rick Barnes has got them playing at a high level early on in the season. Play defense. They can score. They got a little length right now. Well, you look at Lipscomb, they, they run really good stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're setting good screens, they're keeping the weak side occupied, and Tennessee has locked in and held them to 27 points. Not bad. Uh, good start for them, 40-27. The Vols are up. Let's go ahead and show you another game, or a couple other games that went down earlier today, and that would be 8th-ranked Kentucky taking on Monmouth in Madison Square Garden, part of the City Hoops Challenge. And early on, Kentucky would do it, turning some defense into offense. Kevin Knox with the steal. Quad a green, that's a high percentage shot. Wildcats up eight. Better defensive team this year or last year, Antoine? Uh, obviously, okay. I think they're, they're ways away defensively because they've had to incorporate the zone mm -hmm. um, to be good um, on defense. But what I do like about this defensive team, they're long, they're athletic, they could be, they could be a terror, but they haven't got it on the man-to-man -man yet. Kentucky 54-31 at a half, and they would just continue to pull away 76-50. And how about Washington? Comes from behind. You talk about that length. They're on the floor, and Diallo getting it done. Well, P.J. Washington, first of all, he has lost 15 pounds in the last 17 days. Mm. He's ran his tail off in practice. He's in the best shape that he's been in. Kentucky's zone was terrific today. They also made 7 out of 19 from the three-point line. Um, that's where Dari Noka is at. He's one of the he's that stormtrooper right there. Right that's there. where he is. No, <laughs> second to last. That might be the last one because it's the shortest one. Uh, we love Dari. Um, all right, Chris Silva, triple team in the post, finds Malik Kotsar for the easy bucket. Gamecocks pull within one shot. To clears up one. Hassani grab it. Frank Martin was in his ear the entire game and he got it done. Big time layup, big time finish there from a guy who was taking the tongue lasher for about the last four minutes. Coastal looking to respond. Jalen Shaw, desperation three, barely off the mark. First tip off the mark as well. Second tip would not count. Gamecock survived 80 to 78. Frank Martin trying to get this defense a little better. Yeah, it's, uh, our guards aren't very good offensively as far as attacking off the dribble. Uh, so I got a false sense of reality in our practices in preseason that our perimeter guards were guarding. And reality is that we don't guard off the dribble. And uh, we're getting a steady dosage of it. And I told the guys, I'm not playing zone. 
we're going to grow up. We're going to figure out a way to toughen up. Uh, but I'm not going to zone. I'm not going to zone. So we lose, we lose. I said it bef after, before after our last game. I'm not coaching games right now. I'm coaching to get my team to play a certain way. And if we lose, it is what it is. Uh, I love Frank Martin. Uh, you just <laughs> talked about Cal saying, hey, he's going to zone. And Frank Martin's like, uh, -uh I'm not going to zone. If I lose, I lose. What do you make of that? Well, I know this. If you play South Carolina this year, you don't have to work on your zone offense. The entire <laughs> yeah, right. week of preparation. Uh, but that's why Frank Martin is who he is because yeah. – He's not going to waver. He's going to demand it out of his guys. They are not good. They are not good at defending the on yep. ball right now. And if you can't guard the basketball, it doesn't matter what you're doing behind the ball. If yep. you can't guard the ball, mm -hmm. everything's going to break down. And they had it time and time again today. Yeah, and they, they, were, they were bad at guarding the three-point line, too. You add that to the equation, yep. not guarding the ball, and they give up 10 threes. It makes it tough for you, especially at home. So I like that Frank, Mark is, Frank Martin is going to stick with his system, and, and guys have got to buy into it. He's had a lot of success. We obviously know, you know last year we're going to the Final Four, but he lost a lot. So yep. it's going to take some time. This is the frustrating part about coaching the team to go to the Final Four. And then you come back and you start and all over. Aiden. But he's hating too. They, they've been I, we had him mic'd up for that game. I, I would love to know what it was <laughs> after the game and before in, in halftime. Uh, I like to have this guy mic'd up. Grant Williams with the dunk. They're up 13 and a half. You know, Jimmy Dice a couple of minutes ago said, I can't believe we get to talk about basketball for nine more hours because we got some good games nice coming up. Just it's like exciting. That. Arkansas, just like Minnesota. What do you think of that one? I think Arkansas is a team at home that can really light up the basketball defensively and pressure you. And Minnesota cannot give in to that pressure tonight. Barford and Macon and Beard, three senior guards. Yeah. That's hard to handle. It's going to be a tough game, though. Minnesota's lost two games in a row. They're going to be ready to play. Uh, is Florida going to be ready to play, Antoine? Th they've lost three in a row right now. What's going on with the Gator squad? They got to start making some shots. This is a team that scored four, uh, 100 points four times this year. And yep. now this, this uh, loser streak, they haven't shot the basketball well. 36 from two point, 18 percent from the three point line. They got to figure out a way to get easier shots, get their offense going. It's a team that's scoring 90 points a game. Yeah, they, they have become an offensive sensitive team. Yep. So when those shots aren't falling, they forget about the other areas of the basketball game. And, uh, they're, they're up against a team tonight, Cincinnati, that year after year, Physical, you say man, one of the five toughest teams in college ball. Yeah. They feel like Cincinnati did, that they just got out tough last weekend. Yeah. So you know what Florida's up against tonight. If Florida doesn't have, if they didn't pack their toughness, Florida could get beat by 20 points in this game. Because Cincinnati is ready to knock somebody in the Some nose. major concerns about the Gators? Or uh, is yes. this kind of just no. growing pains right now? No, I, I, I have whatever the next level below major is. <laughs> high, DEFCON high, 1 is like high. nuclear meltdown, so okay. we're like at a 2.5. Is that what you're saying? Half, okay. Because I know that the, the, the absence of Egmunu is going to help them. He doesn't solve their issues, yeah. though. One guy doesn't solve yeah. the, 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 the toughness issues and the not sharing the ball issues and all those things that I see a lack of from Florida right now. Vols are sharing the ball. Admiral Schofield, he's got three. That's a three ball. Nine points of the day. They're up 13 at the break. One of the more memorable coaching searches in college football history is over. Jeremy Pruitt. I, there it is. They like him down in Knoxville, and we like practice? him. <laughs> He's going to be recruiting. They're up 13 at the half. Neyland Stadium on the right and Thompson Bowling Arena on the left. And now they have a football coach to coach in that big building as Jeremy Pruitt was introduced to the crowd here at Thompson Bowling Arena here at the first half, and now we're at halftime. I'm Matt Stewart, joined by Debbie Antonelli, and uh, I think Rick Barnes probably pleased with the overall defensive effort. The silly fouls, I think, is something that he probably addressed at halftime as well. Yeah, no question. I, I think, you know, they're getting energy off the bench. They're getting tips and deflections. They're able to get out in transition. I think they've done a good job with that part of the game plan. But also Marbury keeping him uh, in check has been a big part of their game plan as well. James Daniel off the bench. Picked up a couple of quick fouls, had to sit. But then when he came back on the floor, he knocked down three triples and really helped Tennessee create this double-digit lead into the break. And on the other side, Garrison Matthews, the leading scorer in the A-Sun and the leading scorer certainly for Lipscomb, has not been able to get going. He's 0 for 3 from the floor. And I think what's interesting about Matthews is he's not even getting shots. He's 0 for 3 in the first half. He averages 12 field goal attempts per game.
comes off a screen and he is out of rhythm. Tennessee has rotated bodies on her on him with great ball pressure. In the first half, let's see if they can keep up that sustained on the edge effort that Rick Barnes talked about. And I thought it was interesting, Casey Alexander told us at practice, Debbie, that he gets his 19 points per game alley-oop, and they blew it up close, and then it gets stripped, and the Volunteers come away with the ball. We'll get back to that point in just a moment when Lipscomb goes on offense. Williams, the miss, and Pepper, the rebound. What I was going to say is he gets his 19 and a half points per game, but they don't really run anything for him. Well, he's such a good basketball player, and they play off the pass, and Tennessee has taken a lot of that away. You're making a team that is a rhythm offensive team play off the bounce. Pepper, the miss, rebound Schofield. Schofield now with five boards to go along with his nine points in this game. The other thing that Casey Alexander told us yesterday is his team needs to play comfortable. Well, they've been very uncomfortable because of the Tennessee defense. Marbury had his shot contested by Alexander, forced him to miss the layup. Williams, foul is going to be called on Lipscomb. This will be on Matthews. First personal foul on Garrison Matthews. Good hustle right here, and you get an opportunity with, for what you think might be an easy one. But see, in the A Sun, you can lay that up. In the SEC, you got to throw that one down. No 6'11 players, or very few of them in the Atlantic Sun Conference. Bowden misses again. That's twice that Bowden has been point blank in this half and missed up close. How'd you like to run into a screen by Admiral Schofield? No. We joked with him about possibly playing football. Well, he's got a mismatch right here, and that's a terrible pass to the post. See yeah. that, Matt? Yep. That's a bad pass because Schofield had Cooper on his backside. Didn't take advantage of the mismatch of the smaller guard guarding him, and Matthews finally gets a bucket. There's Admiral Schofield, his father retired, senior chief with the U.S. Navy, has a 13-year-old brother named General. Of course he does. Admiral and General. His older brother O'Brien played for the Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks back in 2014, a seven-year veteran of the National Football League. Boy, he was proud of his younger brother today when he was talking to us about what a great baseball player he is, what a skilled basketball player he is. So Matthews completes the three-point play, and the Bisons are back to within 10. Now we asked Schofield about uh, football, and he said Butch Jones tried to get him to come out all the time, and I'm sure Jeremy Pruitt, when he gets a look at that body, will too. Alexander with the finish on the offensive end. Great curl. I'm not sure if that was a pass that was meant to go into Alexander, but it ended up in a nice result for Tennessee. I think it was a fortuitous result of a bad pass or a deflected pass. Matthew scoop shot. Alexander the rebound and the clear ahead to Daniel. Turner travel. And O'Brien Schofield, as we mentioned, a member of the 2014 Seattle Seahawks team that won the Super Bowl. O'Brien played at Wisconsin. And Admiral said he played football until the 10th grade. He was a quarterback in high school. He got tired of getting hit, he said. I bet Jeremy Pruitt could recruit him his fifth year if he put him at tight end and just threw the ball to him and didn't make him block. Ball is stolen by Daniel. Daniel gets fouled on the drive. He'll go to the line for two shots. I love the fact that Rick Barnes starts James Daniel and Lamonte Turner in the second half. These two guys have tremendous chemistry. They came off the bench together. And one of the things that Schofield told us today was, sometimes Coach Barnes doesn't put the lineup in until right before the game. He might watch the way we're warming up to see if we're, we've got the edge about us, the focus that he's talking about. And Daniel and Turner 
have done a terrific job of finishing off the first half, and it might be a good reason why they're starting the second. Daniel ends up missing both of the free throws. I was very impressed with the conversations we had with Admiral and also with James Daniel today. Matthews got open and hit the three. Finally a clean look. Look how quickly he gets his feet down. 23 made threes coming into the game. Yeah, he is number three in the Atlantic Sun, averaging 2.6 a game. I would go right back at him next time down the floor. It is miscommunication on the skip by Williams. I'd go right back to Garrison Matthews to see if you can get him going a little bit. Well, he's now got nine points. Six of which have come here in the first three and a half minutes of this half. Alexander told us that Matthews has the ability to score at every level. Meaning at the rim, yep. inside, there's an inversion to the block. And there's the, the travel. It's because uh, Williams rotated over to help. Twelve turnovers now for the Bisons. Yeah, I like the set right here. You get Matthews on a cut, and then he just stops to invert to the block to post up on a smaller defender in Turner. Matthews comes out of the ball game. They've done a really good job of frustrating him and making things difficult for him today. Which is really interesting to me because Casey Alexander has put his team on the road at Alabama, on the road against Texas. Right, and Tennessee's defense has been able to contain Matthews. I think that might be a little foreshadowing for how good this defense could be. You can take the top scorer out every night. Williams drives and lays it in. I'm telling you, he's tough on an isolation. He doesn't need a ball screen. He can go off the bounce. He's got the elevation to be able to score in the mid-range over the top of someone. Cooper comes back the other way and hits the jumper. That's his third basket of the game, and he has seven. Knocked away. Bisons have a chance to run. Has Cooper on the wing. Goes to Marbury. Had a shot blocked by Alexander. Again, Alexander at the rim. Three on one, and they can't convert. And a foul is going to be called on Buckland and the Bisons. And we have our first time out of the second half. Kyle Alexander has really matured into a basketball presence and a great rim protector for the Volunteers. He's got a couple of blocks here today. And it's a nine-point lead for Tennessee four minutes into the half. And there you see Philip Fulmer way right outside of Neyland Stadium. Legendary head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers and now the athletics director at the University of Tennessee. Thanks a lot for being with us. Life has a lot of funny twists and turns. I mean, a month ago, <laughs> would we imagine that you'd be the athletic director here and Jeremy Pruitt, the head coach? Seven <laughs> days ago, you yeah. probably couldn't have imagined. Eight days. It, it's been energizing uh, for me personally and and uh, I'm really excited about Jeremy, just just uh, a football coach. I mean, a tough guy, and, you know, it's kind of where we are right now. We need that. And uh, he's a great communicator and, and a guy that I think the ball fans are going to just love. Coach, what's his schedule going to be like right now? Like, what is Coach Pruitt after uh, trying to, to, to get after right it's now? totally about recruiting right now. You know, the dead period is, is coming up, and, and the early signing date is a brand-new thing for everybody. That's kind of – you know, the first time we've been through it, you know. So right now he, he's totally focused on recruiting. I was glad to get him down here for about 10 minutes to, to introduce him to the fans. Coach, what kind of style of football are we going to expect to see out of him? Now, I know you said toughness, and we remember how great your teams were here. What well, should we expect? I, I think that's the key word. I think, you know, be big and strong and fast and all those kind of things. But but we've got to be, we've got to be tough and more physical in this league. You know, you look around, the physical teams win, and that's exactly what we're going to be. That doesn't mean that we can't do a lot of things offensively and defensively, but but you've got to be able to play fundamental football and, and play at the line of scrimmage. And, and uh, that's kind of uh, one of the things that really hit home with me that, uh, that Jeremy does. He You can look at his teams, you know, and just, just compare them to what 
what's been successful. It'll be the Bison's ball kicked out of bounds by the Volunteers. When you became the athletics director, what was your first course of action? It obviously was a very painful process, an arduous search, and a lot of disappointments for Volunteers fans. What was your first goal when you said, okay, I'm athletic director, i got to go find the head coach? Well, all, all that was prior to me being here. I would right. like to make sure everybody understands that. When the day we took... The, the job we were going forward. I had a charge from Dr. Davenport, our chancellor, and this is what we want, what we're looking for, you know, how we're going to go about doing it. Nothing before that matters. We're going to make sure that we get the right person at the right time at the University of Tennessee. Coach, you have sort of, um, I want to say, branded the come together moniker, hashtag come together. Everything about you that I've seen so far in the last few days has been about coming together. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, we've been a broken family for a while in a lot of different things. When people change as much as we've changed in the past few years, and I, I'm, I'm going to be really complimentary of Dave Hart pulled us back together some. Butch did a nice job, you know. We had two nine-win seasons, but we still have been fractured, and, and uh, people want unity. They want something they can believe in every day and and go to go to work to, to be – and let's go to work to be the best that we can be. And we have a legacy of that. It's about trust. It's about communication. And, and one of my things, I've seen it – it's very best here at Tennessee, and I've also seen it its very worst when we were fractured. But right now, we're headed in one direction, and that's all together. Tennessee fumbles it away as the Volunteers' lead been cut to seven after the basket by Marbury. As you look at the Southeastern Conference in football right now, what do you see? Obviously, uh, Georgia just won the SEC championship, beat Auburn. Alabama gets into the college football playoff, even though they didn't win the division. No, it's been it's as good as it's been right now. I mean, I, you know, Florida, they won't be down very long. You can bet on that. We won't be down very long. You know, it's once you get to the top, it's hard to stay at the top, so we'll see where Georgia goes, but they, they've done really, really well. But on the other side, you know, you've got Auburn and Alabama that just, you know, they're just outstanding programs. LSU has an outstanding program, and there's not anybody in this league that's not committed financially to having a great program. And then it gets back to leadership. And, and again, just fundamentally, just what we're talking about, trust and communication to get to where you want to get to. Coach, you're going to have a, a whole new set of – management team skill set uh, things that you want to do here <laughs> I, I i can't imagine what your table the timetable has been like and what your calendar has become yeah, well, eight days i, I, I kind of right now know where my office is <laughs> but i'm going to tell you leadership is leadership and and we'll we'll we'll, we'll figure all, all that out but what i'm looking for is a team to work with me i know what my strengths are i know where i need help and it's like anything else. You maximize your, your strengths. You minimize your abilities every way that you can. I, I've got a good group of folks around me. We've just got to make sure, in, in my administration, we want to be the best in the country. And that's if, 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 if that's Jeremy's goal or if that's Rick Barnes's goal or Holly Ward's goal, that's got to be our goal as well, to be the best in the country. Coach, I want to ask you about Rick Barnes. You have a relationship with him. He's done a, a heck of a job with this basketball program. Oh, unbelievable job. Delightful man, strong person. You know, he's a guy that you want your son to play for, you know, and, uh, and, and he coaches him up. I was out here yesterday watching about half their practice, and he allowed me to speak to him afterwards. And uh, I'm telling you, he, he, you know, he expects them to be – strong men first and that's a great place to start he's a great fundamentalist he didn't raise his voice but he was at the same high octave all the time you know well here's coach barnes this is sec wired tell us what you think i love it the difference right now they are still executing what they do we we didn't bone came out flat grant came out flat we're not doing anything yeah we got to play a long way to go. Attack and get on the glass. We got to get stopped. We got to stop turning the ball over. Well, I mean, it's again, it's back about fundamentals, about doing the things that he practiced yesterday well and doing them consistently. We obviously, you know, we're, we're leading, so we're, we're doing some good things, but he expects it all the time. And that's, that's a, as a coach, what you have to do. It's a dangerous team, let's come there. Yeah, you know, they're, everybody looks at them, they're, 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 they're good and they're well coached and, and a talented basketball team. 
Well, let me ask you, Coach, the Volunteers coming off a winless season in SEC football, for first time in program history that's happened, not putting pressure on Jeremy Pro. From a time standpoint, how, how soon before the Volunteers are relevant again, competitive again in the SEC East? Uh, you know, that's a tough question. You don't really know that, but you heard his answer, too. We expect to win right now, you know, and uh, there, there's a level of uh, excellence that is expected at the top of this league, and he's doing what he has to do right now. That's recruit, getting the staff together. We'll, you know, we'll worry about the strength coach, off-season program, spring practice, all those things are part of that. You know, uh, uh, the kids buying in. I mean, there'll be there'll be guys that come and go, you know, a little bit uh, here right now in this transition time. All those things will turn out to be, you know, what it looks like in the fall. 46-42. And Corn will go to the line here. And as you mentioned, this is a very good Lipscomb team that is challenging Tennessee here today. Volunteers have led by as much as 13, but the Bisons have made a run on them here in the second half to cut it down to four. And this is as close as the game has been since the 534 mark of the first half. Coach Fulmer, you broke down that basketball a little, uh, pretty good right there. Are you sure you haven't had any basketball in your background? <laughs> a little bit in high school. That was back in the day when you could play two or three sports, you know, basketball, baseball. I don't think I would have made the track team, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the field part, right? Yeah, the field part, yeah. 48-42. You, know, you know, we talk about something, you know, this – I've had 40 years at this university as a student and an and assistant coach and a head coach. And when you have passion about something and, and about everything that's happened good in my adult life is some way centered around this university. So we, our fans deserve, you know, to have quality. And that's exactly what we're going to work hard to get done. It's certainly a great tradition here at the University of Tennessee in football and in basketball, in women's basketball. So uh, it'll be very interesting for you to, as you go forward, your, your, uh, your history has been football, but now you're managing not just the football program, but all the programs. Well, you know, and we want to be competitive in, in everything. I was down to see Holly practice yesterday, too. And this one, we have a long friendship, and she looks like she's got a, they do. a, a nice-looking basketball team. And, you know, so much of about it is chemistry. You know, they may not be quite as physically talented in some spots, but the chemistry is so good on that basketball team right now that they're playing really you know, at a high level, tomorrow will be fun right. with Texas. That'll they be gotta, a uh, big ball game. One of the great rivalries in women's college basketball, two of the top five winningest programs in the history of the game. And, you know, my daughters, uh, two of my three daughters uh, played here. The one was a, a diver, uh, Brittany, and uh, did was on really, really good teams. And, and uh, Allison, my youngest, was uh, on the, the great softball teams with Monica Abbott. So I know how competitive that is and how much fun that is to be around. So those sports don't need to worry about me just being a football guy. I expect excellence in everything that we do. I think they're going to be lucky to have your leadership, <laughs> all you. those other sports as well as football and basketball. And the crowd's excited to see you in the job. you got a great standing ovation. Coach, thanks a lot for being with us. And Thank continued... You. Success here at the University of Tennessee. Thank you. Thank you for having with us. Thanks, Coach Fulmer. Philip Fulmer is the new AD at the University of Tennessee. Back in Knoxville, Tennessee with a four-point lead, but the way Lipscomb has gotten back in this game is their play off the bench. They had one basket from their bench in the first half. They've had five here in the second. The energy and the adjustments that Casey Alexander and his club have made have allowed Lipscomb to get back in this. They're shooting 50% from the floor, and that's mostly by their bench. And the Volunteers have been sloppy on their offensive end, turnovers, and 0 for their last five. They've now gone four minutes and 29 seconds without a basket. And that's a recipe to get the Bison back in this ball game at 48-44 and 11:38 to play in regulation. And that young man, Garrison Matthews, has finally become unleashed a little bit after they shut him down, held him without a basket in the first half. Matthews now two of six from the floor, and he is the only Bison in double figures with 11 points. Two for three in the second half. Off the inbounds, and the aforementioned Matthews with the basket. Or pardon me, the Volunteers with the basket. Matthews got picked on the play. 
spin move. Matthews comes <laughs> right back, and look at that. Wow. A little right. redemption there for Matthews. Terrific body control. What a spin move by Garrison Matthews. A little contact into the chest of Williams and then high off the board. And a chance at the three-point play right here as Matthews now has 13. He's 6 of 7 at the foul line today. How about this young man? 0 for 3 in the first half. He was checked by multiple defenders first half. He certainly is at the top of the scouting report. And he comes out in the second half and just continues to play hard. He is a tough kid. He had four surgeries during the offseason. He had two hernias that had to be repaired. He had a broken hand from the season that had to be repaired. And then he broke his hand again in a car wreck and had another surgery. See, Marbury is fronting. Grant Williams on the block now, and that is keeping Grant Williams from catching it in isolation. Really good defensive effort by Casey Alexander's club, too. Not just on the offensive end, but they've made some adjustments on the defensive end as well. Foul's going to be on Buckland, and that's going to put Schofield at the line. By the way, do you think Phil Fulmer is excited about being the athletic oh, director here? Man, I mean, he he is really anxious about taking this place back to what he remembers during his time when it was really, really great and special. No doubt about it. It's like a big homecoming for him, and I know the Volunteers fans are happy to have him back. Try to get this program back to where they had been. Matthew slow getting down on the defensive end, and he's hurt. And let's see if he can stay in the ball game. He is limping down the floor. And now he gets down to two knees. And he's going to have to come out of the ball game, I think. Gerald Williams, the official, standing right there over him. Well, we were just talking about how tough he is, and he's having a discussion right now with Casey Alexander. I, I, I mean... He doesn't want to come out. Uh, Debbie, they thought they had lost him for the season last week. He suffered a knee injury against Tennessee State and went to the bench, and the trainer was looking at his ACL. They thought he had blown his ACL. They got the good news on Monday at noon before the Belmont game that it was just a bone bruise. And Matthews fires on the whistle, and Brian Shake steps in and separates Darrington and Matthews. You know, there were no words there. They're just both playing hard. It's a good call. It's a foul by Darrington. He's trying to beat him to the spot. He's trying to get over the top of the screen. There's no words there. Five-point game. Just over ten to play. Marbury challenged by Williams. Miss Pepper, the offensive rebound on the shot was blocked. Technical foul called on Casey Alexander, who has nearly blown a gasket over yeah. on the far side. Line. I believe he was looking for a goaltender. That's what he wanted. Let's check and see if he had a point. He's saying the ball was already on the backboard. Let's see. I've seen that called. I've seen it not called. I don't think the ball was on the back. It was not. It was a clean block, and, I know, think. I just asked this question this week of J.D. Collins, the NCAA supervisor of officials. Who's got the responsibility for goaltending? You know, who, who, what official has that responsibility? The trail or is it the, the slot official? And the official in the C on the strong side can make that call if he's if the trail is not in place already down the floor in time to, to make it it appeared that the block came before the ball hit the backboard which makes it a clean block casey alexander did not see it that way and he draws the technical foul again uh, i'm going to make this point again about the a sun versus the sec you have to throw that one down you can't yeah. lay it off the glass or you got to get it much higher off the board Williams 
And Pepper the rebound for the Bisons. They keep hanging around. They're down seven as Buckland brings it across. Matthews starting to do his thing. Kicks out to Pepper. Here come the Volunteers. Blocking foul on Lipscomb. And this was on Matthews. Number three on him. So volunteers shooting the bonus from here on out. And Darrington at the line. Six for six at the line this season. And the volunteers as a team, 10 of 15 today. You got the feeling that Rick Barnes is playing five guys right now with a smaller lineup, very small and in terms of height, certainly thick yeah. across the front line, much bigger than what Lipscomb is, but energy and effort and guys that can sustain that kind of consistent level of play. It's a part of what we were talking about in the, the first half with Jimmy Dykes out of the studio about culture and character and what you're asking your team to do. How, how hard you're asking them to play every possession. See the Tennessee bench has outscored the Bisons 23 to 9 as the lead has been rebuilt to 9. In the corner, Matthews hits the three pointer, a whistle underneath. Basket will count. It's going to be a foul on Schofield underneath the basket off the ball, so the basket will count. And now Lipscomb's going to get a chance for a five or a six-point play. Double possession in a six-point game. A huge call right there as Schofield was whistled for the foul as first of the game. And he went old school. He raised his hand like, I committed the foul. That was back in the day. Nobody likes to admit they ever yeah. committed a foul, Matt. I like that. They need to go back to that. Could help us out a little bit. I didn't like it as a player. I never raised my hand. I like it as a play-by-play, -play, man, because oftentimes <laughs> they, they call the foul, and the officials got their back to you. They signal to the scorer's table. Matthews off a curl. Misses the three. Jump ball. Foul's going to be called on Pepper. Coming over the back. Now there's some of the vertical of Grant Williams, but he is a player that can rebound balls that are out of his area. He doesn't just get the ball that's over his head with two hands. He can go outside of that range and be able to rebound and now he's going to the to the free throw line three personal fouls now on pepper grant williams eight points five rebounds today and two for two at the free throw line came into the game 70 percent at the stripe volunteers have been a good free throw shooting team this season at 74.7 percent they're fourth in the sec Volunteers lead back to eight. Bisons have been able to cut it to as low as four here in the second half. Backdoor cut intercepted by the Volunteers and knocked out of bounds. This is when you know your defense is good. Everyone's locked in right here. Terrific job down the line. Instead of opening up to the pass, you just go right down the line with it right hand and get that deflection. Ball's ended up in Matthew's hands almost every possession now. And sometimes twice, like right there, three-pointer falling away. I think he's just been more aggressive seeking shots in the second half as well. Yeah. Current ace Sun player of the week after averaging 16 points and four rebounds as the Bisons won at Belmont at Tennessee State, lost to Tennessee Tech. Working against Pepper. Hook shot and one. One hard dribble to the midline and a half hook over the left shoulder. 
And at 6'7", this is what makes him so dangerous is his versatility. He's caught it in the mid post several times today, but he has turned around and shot a jump shot. This time, he takes a strong power move to the midline over his left shoulder. Beautiful. Pepper comes out. He's got four personal fouls. Matt Rose checks in for him. So they get a little bit smaller there as Rose goes at 6'7", Pepper at 6'9", checks out. Double bonus rest of the way for the Volunteers, and Grant Williams completes the three-point play. It's a double-digit lead for Tennessee again. Cooper gets by his man, drives, scoop shot with the left hand. Nicely done by Kenny Cooper. Beautiful take, being overplayed by Daniel. Under eight minutes to play. Bowden on the give and go gets to Alexander, and he was fouled. Kyle Alexander will be at the line when we get back. Casey Alexander's family hoping for the upset today. But their team is down by nine. Hey, whether you know it or not, those guys are going to keep playing. All right? And they're driving, they're adjusting, okay? Again, they start driving the ball. If you put your hands out, you can't keep, you just can't let them keep bullying you to the basket. Get between him and the rim, take it on the chest, they'll call it. Barnes warning his team the game is not over yet. This is the fourth all-time meeting in a series that dates back to 1954. When they played back then, the Bisons were an NAI program. In fact, at one point, Debbie, this Lipscomb program was one of the best and most powerful NAI programs in the entire nation. I love the Lipscomb-Belmont rivalry. They've already played twice. You see the overplay by Daniel and then the attack to the rim, the rotation there, but Cooper's too deep at that point, and he's left-handed, so he wants to get to his left hand. Cooper with nine points, only one Bison's player in double figures right now, and that's Matthews with 17, only one volunteer in double figures. That's Grant Williams and Kyle Alexander with four points at the free throw line for the first time today. Field goal percentage, points each year have gone up mm -hmm. for Kyle Alexander. It speaks to his off-season development. And right now, he's a guy that averages more rebounds than points, and that's a good niche for him at his size with his shot-blocking ability and his ability to offensive rebound. Schofield he, comes in for him as so, they go to the press. You know what, Matt? Sometimes you need a guy that doesn't get all the headlines. You know, and, and that's if Kyle Alexander can do those things for Tennessee, it'll make this team this team's defense better. I'd one up you on that and say a lot of times you need a lot of guys who don't get the headlines, maybe a couple of guys to get the headlines, and some other guys that are just happy to do their role, as Coach Barnes said, do the dirty work. And Alexander is one of those guys. He's only been playing basketball for basically five years since he came out of Canada. Some of the most important detail in the game has nothing to do with points and rebounds. It's how you get those points and rebounds. Rose did a good job of muscling the ball up over Williams to get the basket. It's still a nine-point game. Three-pointer. James Daniel with his fourth three-pointer of the game, and he's got 12. James Daniel, he gets his feet down quickly on his jump shot. Nobody does it better than Steph Curry gets their feet down on a jumper, especially when you've got range like Daniel has. We've seen Daniel the scorer today instead of Daniel the distributor. No assist for Daniel. Backdoor cut. Cooper missed the left-handed layup. It's a hard shot. Good help by Bowden. And then Bowden takes the three. Didn't get the payoff on the offensive end. Head to Matthews. Matthews' spin move got tied up and got fouled. Good job by Matthews. He really didn't have a basket there, so he just went right at the guy and drew a foul. Making something out of nothing right there. Well, he was out of control, so you don't want to bail him out. 
And from that angle, that looked like ball. Daniel was called for the foul, and that's number three on him as Matthews now has 18 points. Got a lot of his today at the free throw line. He's eight of nine to the line, so nearly half of his points have come as freebies. Pepper with four fouls comes to the scores table. He'll check back in, and here he comes. Monday, the SEC Nation team will have complete breakdown of where your favorite SEC teams are headed for the bowl season. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You can also see it streaming live on the SEC app. Fumbled away by the Volunteers, and here comes Matthews with the Bisons down eight. Fleming banging body shot deflected by Bowden. Seven blocks for the Volunteers today. Inside Schofield off glass. Nice leave off. Good drop off by Darrington. Well, they skip the ball in transition like that, Matt. Yep. Schofield becomes the third volunteer to reach double figures. He has 11. Pepper. And tipped in. We got a hand on that. The timeout called by Rick Barnes. I guess they're going to give the basket to Pepper on that. 10 point lead, 529 to play here on Rocky Top. It's a 10-point game with five and a half to play, and time now to take a look at today's good hands play. It is brought to you by Allstate. Well, we've been talking Tennessee defense all game, and they have been terrific. Their rotations, high hands on the catch, and they're there on the catch to block shots. Terrific job by Kyle Alexander. It's been a terrific team defensive effort that allows them to get some runouts and scores. One of two blocks for Alexander today. Nine make that seven total blocks for the Volunteers. And there's the Casey Alexander fan. They seem to be engaged, of course, Allie there in the Lipscomb sweatshirt. She is a freshman here at the University of Tennessee, and she's majoring in something called supply chain management. Final exams going on. Uh, I believe they started this week and continue on next week. And then her uh, middle brother there, Reed, uh, hoping that he continues his education here at the University of Tennessee as well. But Casey says that uh, much like uh, much like him when he was that age, Reed is thinking more about fraternities and football games. After all, that is why you go to college, right? <laughs> That's what my boys think. <laughs> Jeremy Pruitt, Pruitt, the big head here, is here today. Of course, he was here earlier today as he was introduced to the crowd, yesterday formally becoming the new head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers football team. Schofield. Pepper gets up high to get the rebound. Marbury, a kick out to Pepper. Bison's looking for a shot. They're down 10 points right now. Now, see, I think Marbury has to score without Matthew on the floor. Left it short. Bowden. Corn runs out for the Bisons as Marbury missed the layup. Good defense well, by the Volunteers. The last couple of times he's had a, a, a open court play, it's been blocked. Under four and a half to play. Ball batted out of bounds. Here's the SEC wired with Rick Barnes. This is when we got to really get locked in, stay locked in on the defensive end of your scout report. Again, same thing, Grant. You made a great play, but we got a rebound. Okay? You got it? Again, the point guard, we can't let him keep turning the ball up. 
You got it? And we got a guard. Okay, we got to make them get into long possessions down there. We gotta, we're in a ball game here, and you guys know it. We got to get stops. Well, at the break, Matt, Lipscomb was plus six on the glass, and Tennessee has turned that around. Now they're plus one. Cooper was called for the foul for the Bison. So that's number four for him. So Lipscomb has two players with four fouls, Cooper and Pepper. And Lamonte Turner with the free throws. As a coach, you're always looking for your team to get better. You have to continue to ask them to do the same things over and over. You've got to build better habits than what the other team has. And you've got to do it consistently. And so all the detail of the game, cutting hard, rebounding, blocks and out, closing out, making the extra pass, those are things you emphasize every day. Those are the things that Rick Barnes talks to his team about. Backdoor cut and nicely done as Pepper lays it in. Feed from Cooper. Nine points. Less than four minutes to play now. And we also heard Rick Barnes say these guys aren't going away, and he's absolutely right. The way they play, the way they cut, how they share the basketball, and the way they shoot threes, they're going to be in it to the end. They're in no hurry to take that bus ride back on I-40 to Nashville. And so Matthew got out for a little bit of a break, and now Casey Alexander has him back on the floor. you got your best scorer out there who's had a hot hand in the second half. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Cooper, another cut and the finish by Pepper. Back-to-back -back spectacular assist by Cooper. Lipscomb cuts it to seven, and Barnes calls timeout. Terrific job by Lipscomb. Spread the floor, cut back door against the overplay. And when a team is playing up the line and they over-rotate, you got to find the open player at the rim. Seven-point lead, Tennessee. Lipscomb digging back in with 3.18 to play in the second half. Now look at the arrow and the shadow on Schofield. You can't be ball watching right here. Pepper does a nice job of going back door. Off the cut, good pass by Cooper. And then the same thing here, watch Cooper turn the corner right here. And because Schofield is ball watching, second time in a row, that's not gonna be fun in film session tomorrow. No, it will not. And Debbie, two great plays by Cooper to distribute right there. And Coach Alexander had told us that their offense not really in sync comparable to where they were a year ago. Of course, Moran, as we mentioned, is out. And Cooper had missed the first two games of the season with an ankle injury. And maybe he is getting back to that place where they expect him to be. Well, the details right here are going to come into play if you want to finish this game off. For Tennessee, they have got to make sure on the defensive end that they are ball you and man. you got to see ball and you got to jump to the basketball. And on, on the other end for Lipscomb, they've got to make sure they cut just as hard as they've been cutting in the last couple of minutes. Now down to 10 on the shot clock for the Volunteers. Darrington getting a lot of minutes here in the second half. Three on the clock. Darrington kicks to Daniel. Daniel misses the three, and they get the own offensive rebound there, so the Vols get a chance for a new 30 here. Back to the tall lineup with Alexander on the floor with Williams. Cooper trying to defend Daniel before the catch. Four on the shot clock. Alexander with the shot. And offensive rebound by Williams. Foul on Pepper, and he's done. Yeah, that is a tough break for Casey Alexander, the head coach for Lipscomb, because Alexander Kyle on the floor for Tennessee is the fifth option. Right. He's the last person that Rick Barnes wants taking that shot. And when you don't get the weak side rebound, and you get a foul on top of it. You can see why Casey Alexander, the head coach for Lipscomb, is frustrated. And then you lose your size at the rim and Pepper. Pepper fouls out with 10 points and 15 rebounds. He has been terrific. His effort has been consistent all game. 
So the Bisons lose a big piece of the puzzle. You hit the nail right on the head. They got what they wanted defensively. They got Alexander taking the shot right there, but could not keep Williams from getting the offensive rebound. And to compound the situation, you have the foul out for Pepper. So now a nine-point lead for Tennessee as we approach two minutes to play. Cooper has been a big playmaker for him here in the second half. Can he do some more of that? Bowden on Matthews. And trying to get to him. Matthews ends up getting it, drives to the basket. There's contact, no whistle. Good patience here by Tennessee. Let's see if Williams can work his way to the block. That's where you want to throw the ball, down to him on, on the block. Right there. Five. There's Williams with three. Turn around, buried it. That should be it. That's what you want. Big basket, Grant Williams, when it really counted. 11-point lead for the Volunteers again, and now time really against the Bisons. Cooper drives, missed the layup. Darrington the rebound, and he traveled. Just couldn't get his footing in the paint, and so the Bisons get it again. Watch the screen on the ball, and then a roll to the block. You get Marbury on your backside, and then you just turn away from the help. Terrific job by Williams. Cooper drives, challenges the defense, Man. and gets it off the glass. Kenny Cooper's been terrific attacking the rim in the second half for Lipscomb. He's got 11 points and five assists. The time's going to run out here on Lipscomb unless something really big happens for him. And this is where the maturity of Daniel comes in play. You know, you're going to run the shot clock down. He's got the ball. That's who, between him and Schofield and, excuse me, Williams, that's who you want to have the basketball. Not the most artistic dunk, but it counts for two. Buckland takes the three and hit it, and a timeout called by the Bisons. Let's check in with Peter Burns real quick. All right, gentlemen, we got a game coming up right after this. Bryce Brown, 15 minutes to tip off between uh, Auburn and UAB. Auburn's won the last four in, in between these this matchup against the Blazers, but those games have been decided by less than 11 points. That'll be coming up uh, about 15 minutes to tip off. Thank you, Peter. That's not an easy game for the Auburn Tigers against the Blazers team out of Conference USA. Tonight we'll have a college hoop doubleheader for you to wrap up the night here on SEC Network. It all starts at 645 Eastern with Arkansas playing host to number 14 Minnesota. Then at 9 o'clock to wrap it up, Missouri takes on Green Bay. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. Auburn, the top rebounding team in the SEC, also the top shot blocking team in the SEC. Let's see if they can match what Tennessee has done here on the defensive end. Yeah. They've been terrific. Meantime, it looks like Tennessee is going to hold off the upset bid by Lipscomb here today, already today on SEC Network. We saw South Carolina survive an upset bid from Cliff Ellis in Coastal Carolina, 80-78, the final there from Columbia. I had South Carolina earlier this year in the Puerto Rican uh, tournament, and uh, they are continuing to get better. That is a team that uh, – is going to keep improving because their defense is going to get better and they really do a nice job of sharing the basketball. Hard to replace Sundarius Thornwell, no who's now playing in the NBA. But Frank Martin's got some young guys that are really starting to play. I think they're coming on. And uh, Rick Barnes has got to be pleased with the effort that his team has put forth here. He knew this was not going to be an easy challenge for his team. About to be 7-1. and one. This is their best start since opening the 2010-2011 season with seven straight wins under then-head coach Bruce Pearl. Fleming drives to the basket with the whistle before the shot. But how about this Tennessee program? Pick 13th in the Southeastern Conference, and here they are, number 24 in the nation, four weeks in to the college basketball season. Coach Barnes said we have rebounding has got to be better. Our depth off the bench has got to be better. I think he's gotten some answers today. His second half performance by, you know, what you might call the players off the bench. There were some players like Daniel 
and Turner that he started the second yep. half with. So there's a lot of combinations that Rick Barnes can go to. Fleming goes right back up with it. Had the shot knocked away by Schofield. Still battling. Pass deflected out of bounds by the Volunteers. But they started the day, Debbie. Number seven in the ESPN Daily RPI. They've got top 100 wins against Purdue. That's number 14, NC State and Mercer. And they're only lost to number five, Villanova. And they had a 12-point lead at the half. And then for Lipscomb, they're picked second in the A-Sun behind Florida Gulf Coast. So those two teams will have an incredible race. And how about Tennessee in the schedule? They're already 3-0 against the ACC if you count that preseason exhibition against Clemson. They've beaten Clemson. They've beaten NC State. And coming in next, you got North Carolina already sold out for that ball game on ESPN. Luke May is one of the best stories in college basketball in the early part of the season. He's a 2020, 2010 guy. And he and Marvin Bagley Jr. are the third, I should say, from Duke. They're only two guys in the ACC averaging 20 and 10. And Rick Barnes may be pushing for admission into the ACC because they got North Carolina, and then they got Wake Forest well, after that. He's familiar with the ACC, having spent some time at Clemson. Stops at Providence, George Mason, Clemson, Texas, where he won 402 games and now Tennessee. Marbury, Kraut thought he traveled. It turns into a turnover anyway. Schofield ahead of the pack and jammed it. Matthews, three. Another timeout called by Lipscomb. Casey Alexander is going to be disappointed with the loss, but there's going to be parts of this game plan that he's going to be really pleased about in helping his team build for the next one. Well, this will be their fourth loss of the season, but three of them now have been against Texas, Bama, and now Tennessee, all of them on the road. The really only disappointing loss for them to Tennessee Tech. And of course, they've got a sweep of Belmont. They snapped an 11 game losing streak against their crosstown rivals in the game they called the Battle of the Boulevard there in Nashville. And then a week later, beat them again for a second time. Two miles separate those two universities. Great mid major rivalry, probably a little understated in college basketball as the shot goes over the backboard with five seconds to play. Sigh of. We'll get them next time. And as a head coach's wife, you don't get too high no. or too low. No, you don't. And the Alexander family going to go home disappointed here today. But the Lipscomb Bison played well. But Tennessee just too much as the Volunteers win this one. 81-71. The Volunteers now improve to 7-1. and one. They've got a week off before the North Carolina Tar Heels come to town. 24th ranked Tennessee with a 10 point lead. And now for Debbie Antonelli and the entire SEC Network team, I'm Matt Stewart. So long from Knoxville. Now to Peter Burns in the SEC Network studios. All right, thank you, Matt. It is a successful day so far here on the SEC Network. As